Hey everybody, Chris Gray here, and I am back. That's right, I was on a long sabbatical, but I'm back, and we're going to really upgrade this channel, and we're going to do it with a really awesome camera. I want to get some better video quality in my YouTube videos, and also in some of my other video work that I do. So I've been searching on the market for a really awesome camera uh, at a good price, and I think I found it with the Sony FDR AX53. It's a 4K Handycam, which is loaded with a lot of really awesome features and technology. Now in this part of the video, I'm recording on my 9.7 inch iPad Pro, hooked up to an Audio-Technica shotgun microphone using an iRig Pre. So when I started looking for a video camera to kind of up my game, there were a couple different things I wanted to look for. In between uh, DSLR, between um, uh, like a handy cam. Uh, most of you who have watched my channel know I've been using my iPhone or my iPad, or I've been using a Logitech C930 a webcam. You know, I've used a Mevo camera in the past. I've used and tested a lot of different cameras, but I wanted to kind of cut through it all. I wanted to get one solution that would be good for the YouTube and one that I could run around outside and do some, uh, some video shots with my son. So for this video, I'm going to keep everything stock with the camera. I am not going to be adding any special audio equipment to it. I want to do everything um, just on the camera. So if you are looking for a camera to just pick up and start shooting video, whether it's for your family or YouTube channel or whatever, um, I want to show you exactly what you're going to get. All right, so now we're looking at the front of the camera here, and I wanted to show you the uh, Boss image stabilization. I'm recording this particular part of the video on my iPhone 8 Plus. Now, as I'm moving the 4K camera around, you can see the lens is actually moving. It's on a, um, a gimbal that's built inside. So I'm moving the camera around with the viewfinder facing towards my iPhone so you can see that although obviously the image is moving, it's not jiggly like when I shake my iPhone around. All right, so I'm recording my son now riding on his bicycle. We're gonna go down to the end of the block here and then we're gonna come back to the house. And uh, this is just to get an idea of the image stabilization. On the one side of the screen, you'll see the iPhone 8 Plus. And on the other side, you'll see the Sony. I have both recording at the same time so we can get a feel for the image stabilization. It's also important to note that there is a little image stabilization on the iPhone 8 Plus. Uh, built into the cameraing system and also they use software to help with that as well. I'm also using the built-in microphone so you can get an idea for uh, what it sounds like on, on the camera without any fancy microphone hookups. Also note that I have it set up for two-channel stereo recording, not for 5.1 surround. This microphone does have the capability of 5.1 surround, but I didn't think it was really necessary for this part of the video. All right, Brian, are you ready to go? All right, that's my son Brian from Brian'sToyBox.tv. He's going to go down that way, uh, but he's going to turn around and go down to the end of the street. And we're going to follow. Go ahead, bud. Now I'm holding both uh, my iPhone and the Sony camera at my chest height. Oh, I didn't know him. See? I'm trying not to stabilize with my hands too much, but I'm so used to doing it that it, it's kind of difficult to not try and to overcompensate here. All right, Brian, turn around. Let's head back to the house. And I'm going to jog behind you, okay? Bring me the bus. Okay, ready? I'm going to jog. Here we go. Go ahead.
Brian for helping with this demonstration. Anytime. All right, so in this part of the video, we're going to be showing the distance the camera can zoom in on, and of course, the microphone pickup from the distances. I have the 4K Sony camera recording in 4K using the built-in microphone. My son is my helper. He's gonna be helping me with this part of the video. Thanks, buddy. Okay. We're about eight feet from the camera, so let's take two steps back. Nine, 10. All right, so now we're 10 steps back from the camera. And I also want to mention that it's around 7.30 Eastern time in the spring, almost summertime. So it's getting closer and closer to dusk. So it's going to give us more of a low light, especially as we go further in our backyard where it gets more shadowy. All right, we're at 20 feet from the camera, and I'm wondering if you can hear us in the microphone. All right, that's Brian at 20 feet. I'm going to zoom in on the 4K Sony camera. Here we go. Going to zoom in, and I'm not going to adjust the camera, I just want to zoom in. Maybe I will adjust the camera just a little bit. Now something to mention that as you zoom in, the boss uh, image stabilization uh, that Sony uses is going to be a lot more noticeable. So right here we are fully zoomed in on the 4K Sony camera. All right, now on the iPad Pro recording in 4K, I'm going to zoom in all the way in on Brian. That's as far as we can zoom in. All right, I'm going to zoom out and we're going to go another 10 more feet and we're going to zoom in and see what it looks like. Okay, so now I'm on the 4K Sony camera and I'm going to zoom in on Brian. And I'm going to zoom in quickly just for the sake of time. As you can see, the balanced optical steady shot kind of fails when you're zooming in on a close shot. So I would recommend turning it off when you have your camera on a tripod and you're trying to zoom real close into a subject. Otherwise, you'll get too much overcompensation. All right, so now we're on the iPad. We're going to zoom all the way in on Brian. And remember, he's at 30 feet still. And that's as far in as we can go using the zoom on the iPad Pro, recording at 4K in a low, lo low light condition. 50, five, and zero. Now we have Brian at 50 feet. I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm gonna zoom in pretty quick, just for the sake of time. The stabilization is gonna kick in and make it a little bit tricky. All right, you can see him wiggling his, he's got some kind of uh, plastic bead necklaces that he likes to play with that he got for St. Patrick's Day. As you can see, as I, if I slowly move the camera around, the image stabilization kicks in and we start getting some, some movement here. This can be turned off in the settings so you can have more of a steady shot when you're zooming in um, at this amount. All right, so it's almost eight o'clock at night, and I wanted to give you another example of low light level conditions when you're shooting with this camera. Um, I've been very impressed with it. So what I'm gonna do is, I have a metal pole um, just behind me here, which is almost 30 feet away, and on top I have a tennis ball, and I wanna zoom in on it, and I'm gonna focus so that the tennis ball is in focus, the rest will be blurred out. Now I turn the image stabilization off just because when you start zooming in, it really wiggles and jiggles. And we don't want that for this type of shot. So I'm zooming in. And I'm gonna get right in on that tennis ball. And I'm gonna lock my tripod in place here. And I've changed the manual ring on the front for, uh, for focus, which is a really cool feature. And I'm gonna focus in here. Quick note, while recording some of this part of the video up until this point, I was standing behind the camera and the stereo microphone was picking me up on the left side. That's why you hear my audio primarily on the left side for some of the shots. All right, so now I have the tennis ball focused with the background being slightly blurred. They call this a bokeh effect and this is really cool if you're doing YouTube videos or any kind of video really. And while recording in 4K with this sensor in this low light condition, I think it comes out really, really nice. Now I'm gonna get right up on the tennis ball. All right, so the sun is really starting to go down. The light level is very low. 
I've moved closer to the tennis ball and I've changed the focus. And as you can see, you get a really nice quality shot in 4K, even in this low light condition. I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. If you're already sold on the camera, you can check out the affiliate link for this camera in the show description. That being said, I hope you stick around. I have some more stuff to show you. Now, my studio is in the basement and all of the settings are set to auto. And we're also using the built-in microphone set up in stereo mode. Also, we're recording at 4K resolution, 30 frames per second. My studio is located in uh, my house in the basement. Um, I've tried to light it as best as I can. And you probably hear some noise in the, in the studio here with the stock camera. Now using a third party or a shotgun mic or a specialty microphone should help to clear that up uh, depending on your shooting situations. And I plan on reviewing such microphones soon. But for the time being, I want to keep everything stock, at least for this video. Now to give you an idea what kind of lighting I have, uh, most of my lighting in here is around 5,000 Kelvin. Now I'm using, I have some hair lights here that I've installed in the ceiling. And I'm also using a key light and a fill light. So you still have pretty good lighting in the studio. And my distance from the camera right now is probably around five foot. Let's shut some of the lights off here in the studio and experiment and see how good the sensor does in really low light. All right, this is with the key light shut off. I'm gonna go turn off the fill light. All right, so the fill light's also off. Key light's off, the fill light's off. And if I had to guess, I'd say where we probably took out about 2,500 lumens. So let's shut these lights off and see just how the sensor works when it's really dark. Well, as you can see, it's just too dark. So let's turn on the key light and get a little bit of light back in here. Now, while no one's really gonna shoot uh, videos in pure pitch black darkness, I think it would be cool to show a really awesome feature of this camera. So I'm gonna shut off all the lights and show you the night shot mode. Boom, night shot. Pretty scary? No, this is pretty awesome. I love night shot mode. Now you can probably see a little bit of light glare back here. That's from my uh, smart bridge and from my router. But other than that, it is pitch black down here. There is no other light. And what's really cool about the night shot mode is, as you can see, I have these two water bottles here. You can definitely tell which one is full and which one is empty, right? Of course you can. That's pretty awesome. All right, now I'm getting kind of scared. Let's turn some lights back on in the studio. All the lights are back on, but guess what? I forgot to turn off night shot. So give me one second. All right, now with all the lights back on, I just want to quickly mention that whether you're doing video or photography, uh, lighting is extremely important. Lighting can make and break almost any camera. If you don't have good lighting, you're gonna have uh, dull, grainy, or noisy looking video and pictures. So it's important to spend a little bit of money on lighting. Now, if you subscribe to my channel, um, I'm gonna be doing some lighting videos real soon uh, to help you, especially if you're new. Now, in just a moment, I'm gonna go over the different connectors on the camera and the menu and give you a little bit closer uh, hands-on on the lens itself and the manual control ring. But before I do that, I just want to finish with the audio portion. All right, now, in this part of the video, we are in 1080p uh, in a different file format. And the file format um, in the camera dictates what you can do uh, with the camera. So we're in the lowest uh, file format uh, for, for 1080p. And that gives us the ability to take a still shot at 16 megapixels um, while recording, and it gives us uh, 5.1 surround sound. So you're probably going to hear all kinds of weird ambient noise here in the studio. Um, but the camera should still look really good. And I ha also have to mention that it's 1080p at 60 frames per second. And if I remember correctly, I believe you can also do uh, 120 frames per second when in 1080p. So let me demonstrate the 5.1 surround sound. Now, it may not come across that well, uh, considering you're probably watching this video on a smart device or even on a computer wearing stereo headphones, but we're gonna give it a go anyway, just so you can get a, an idea of what it's gonna sound like and, and how different it may sound from stereo. And now I'm on the uh, backside. All right, I'm gonna swing back around, all the way around, back to the front of the camera. 
and you can hear my voice as I'm going around. And that should give you somewhat of an idea of what the surround sound sounds like on the camera. So I'm just going to snap a quick image to show you the image quality that the sensor can take for a still. And then we're going to switch back to 4K mode. All right, so we're back in 4K mode um, with the audio set for two channel with no noise reduction and all the settings uh, are set to auto. Um, so as you saw, this camera is also very capable of taking nice still shots. And you really got a nice uh, bokeh effect uh, where you have your, your main subject in focus and everything in the background is kind of blurry. This is a really awesome effect to have. Now, of course, for the most part, me personally, I'm not gonna be shooting a lot of still images with this camera, but it's nice to know if I wanted to take just this camera on vacation, say to Disney or overseas, it's small and compact enough to take everywhere I need to go, but also very capable. Still shots, video, this camera's got it licked. Close up view time. Now, as we're looking at the Sony camera here, I just wanna mention we are recording this part of the video on my iPhone 8 Plus running in 4K at 30 frames per second. Um, the camera is pretty compact in size, the size of my hand. I have an average sized hand, I guess. And here is the Sony camera next to a Vato camera, a regular high def camera that I reviewed uh, on my channel here. So there is quite a bit of a difference in size. Uh, the Vato being a much smaller camera, but it doesn't have 4K. Of course, it also doesn't have the uh, the balanced optical steady shot, which is absolutely awesome. And probably one of the best features of this camera. Now let's take a look here. On the front here, we have the Zeiss lens, which is a wide angle lens at about 26.8 millimeters. This camera is also capable of taking still shots of up to 16.6 megapixels, which is really cool. On different high def settings, you can record at 120 frames per second. And right here, we have a manual ring. This manual ring is really cool. We're gonna come back to that in just a second. Um, we have the manual button, which works with the manual ring. Over here, we have the screw so you can mount to a tripod, which is really, really handy. Uh, in the back here, we have the battery, which gives you about an hour of uh, straight recording in 4K. We have a uh, start-stop recording button, which I think will also work when you're in camera mode. Uh, back here, we have the DC in where you would plug in your charger and it just flips closed for convenience and you know keep dirt out of the camera. Okay, on this side of the camera, we have the adjustable strap, which is really handy when you're shooting. And we have uh, this little symbol here is for the NFC, your near field communication, which gives you one touch uh, sharing and also one touch remote so you can pair uh, your smart device uh, with this and you know be in remote control mode. It's also important to note that there's Wi-Fi capabilities in this camera as well. So you can control the camera with your smart device. Also, you can control multiple cameras at once, which is really cool. Um, a feature I haven't played with because I don't have the budget to have multiple cameras. Over here, we have a multi-port. It just slides open, which is really nice. And we have two very important uh, connections right here. We have a, a micro USB which is really good for you know data transfer. And right here, and this is what's really important for me, this is a 3.5 millimeter jack for microphone in. This way you can connect external microphones into the camera and get some really awesome audio. Another spot right here is a port, which opens right up. Not quite as good as the other ports, but there it is. Boom, and this is a headphone jack, which can be really handy for monitoring your audio or listening to the videos you just recorded. On the top of the camera, you have your built-in microphone right here. It says your 5.1 surround sound microphone. On the top here, we have this uh, this flap. And once you open it up, it reveals the cold shoe slash hot shoe. So if you're hooking in a third-party microphone um, into the cold shoe, boom, you connect it, you plug into your microphone jack on the side, you're ready to go. However, Sony does have a proprietary connection here, which also makes this a hot shoe. So you can pretty much plug in um, their stereo microphone in here to get some better audio. Not to mention the fact that you could put in a, uh, a flash or a external uh, LED light that Sony makes, which is really cool, because then it will unlock some uh, red eye functionality and some different lighting features that are in the menu. Here we have your, your zoom feature, uh, which is cool. And we also have a button here to take a photo. Uh, you can take a photo during 
uh, you know, when you're in 1080p recording mode, if you're like doing a video and you want to snap a shot while you're recording, that's really handy. Or you can use this button right here, which will switch you from movie or uh, video mode to camera mode. It is important to note that if you open the LCD viewfinder, guess what? The camera turns on no matter what. Also, if you pull out this viewfinder, um, the camera will turn on. You might have heard the camera turn on. Um, this viewfinder was a little bit disappointing because it doesn't have like a real good cup shape. It's really hard to look in here, especially on a bright day. Um, I find it works okay, but I doubt I'm going to be using it at all. Now, when you push it back in, like I just did, it will shut the shutter and your camera is turned off. So let me open the LCD screen this way. And now, you know, the shutter opened up and the camera is turned on whether you want it to or not. So I'm going to spin the screen around because the screen has different positions. All right, let's take a look at some of the things we have here. We have a little... Um, a speaker port. Here we have a port. We just pull this down and we have a mini HDMI uh, port. So you can plug into your high def TV and you can actually um, display some of the video you recorded. We have a manual power button right here. We have the night shot button, which is also available in the menu and on the main screen. I'll show you in a second. Right here we have the play button. We press this and the shutter will close on the camera and we'll be in uh, movie mode. So I have some video recorded here as of June 4th. Press it again, and it will switch back into uh, recording mode, whichever you're in, whether it's in shoot, you know, uh, photo mode or in movie recording mode. Right here is that voice cancellation button. You just press it, and anyone on this side of the camera recording um, should be muted out, and the microphone should only be pulling audio from in front of the camera over here. Right here we have our, um, our SD... Uh, XC card slot. Um, you want to make sure that you get a really good um, SD card. Mine is 128 gigabytes at 95 megabits a second. Um, you don't want to go any lower than that. You really want to record at the highest uh, amount that you possibly can. Um, I got this on Amazon and I'll have a link to this SD card in the description. And it just slides right in to the port. Press it in. You'll hear a click. You see a red light, it's reading the uh, the memory stick and close the port. What's really cool about this port here is um, if you leave it open on accident and you close the screen, it's not gonna scratch anything because it's, it's slightly recessed. So open or closed, doesn't really matter. So like I mentioned, you have this, uh, this manual ring here, which gives you some really cool functionality. So if I press and hold this manual button down here at my thumb on press and hold it, it's gonna open up this menu and I can use this wheel to choose one of the settings I want to manually control. So let's go with zoom here for a minute. So I'm going to stop on zoom. I'm going to hit the manual button and it's going to give me the ability to, to zoom in using that manual ring. Now I have to mention that when you're using different, uh, different settings, like let's say are you doing white balance here, let's go to white balance. If you go to the white balance shift and I'm going to hit that button right there, uh, the manual button, I can change that white balance but all of the other settings are going to go into a, uh, they're still gonna be in automatic mode. So you can only really control one of those settings manually at a time. All right, so let's go over some of the menu features. As you can see in the, in the screen here, I have Batman, Superman, and Darth Talon. Eh, what can I tell you, I'm a nerd. As you can see, it's pretty crisp and clear, even recording this in low light on my iPhone uh, 8 Plus. Now, some people are going to like this menu system that Sony has. Some people don't. Um, it's really, for me, it seemed to be okay. So I'll go into the menu, and we have all these different selections here. Let's go to shooting mode first. So in shooting mode, you have movie, which would be regular recording. You have photo. You have time-lapse capture, um, which I believe works in the 4K setting, which is what we are in now. The slow... Um, this slow recording does not work in 4K. The golf shot doesn't, and the high speed does not either. Um, some of these features unlock depending on which mode you're in, like if you're in the different 1080p shooting modes. So let's go to, um, we're going to go to this one in a second. We got playback and functionality. The shutter will close, and in here we have the different videos that I've recorded, and you can go through them and check them out. I'm going to press this camera button. It's going to put me back into recording mode. I'm going to hit menu. And let's go to setup. 
uh, setup. You can change the media info, the format. You can repair any you know damaged images. You can change file numbers. If we scroll down, you can download music. There's so many different options in here. I'm going to have to make a separate video uh, just for all the different options available in this camera. Uh, over here, we have edit and copy. And over here, we have the wireless feature. When you go into the wireless feature, this is where you go to control a smart control with the smartphone, multi-camera control, live streaming. Um, you can send to a smartphone using an uh, NFC and view on a TV if you have the uh, HDMI connected. All right, let's go to image and quality size. So right now we have record mode, and I always recommend if you're recording in 4K to use the maximum megabits per second. Um, definitely don't want to skimp on that. Your frame rate, depending on if you're in Europe or in the United States, it's going to vary what you see. Um, I usually go with 30 frames per second. If you go with 24, it's more like a cinematic style. Um, dual video recording, it is exactly what it says. You can record in 4K and in another format. Right now, I have file format 4K, XAVC, um, and you can change that by tapping on it. Um, and each one of these different file formats opens up different features within the camera. So I'm going to leave it on the 4K for now. Uh, down here, we have image size. Uh, so if I tap on image size, I can actually change um, and see, you know, I can pick which image size I want to go to. Right now, it's at uh, 8 megapixels. Um, for some reason, I don't know why it won't let me go. Oh, because I'm in shooting mode, it won't let me change it. But I believe if I hit the camera button, switch over to the camera and hit menu, go into image size quality, image size, I'm now at 16.6 um, megapixels. So that's cool. So let's hit X. Let's get out of there. Um, let's actually let's switch back into camera or to uh, record, you know, video mode, and you can see the different stuff here on the on the screen. It's on auto, so it kind of goes away. Okay, now let's go into camera and mic settings. All right, we have white balance on auto, which you can adjust. Um, keep in mind, if you change the white balance, it will disable um, smile and face detection. You have spot meter, you have spot meter focus, you have spot focus, um, exposure, focus. You can change the iris, the shutter speed. So many awesome things you can change in here. Um, the limit, the AE shift, white balance shift, your low lux. You have a scene selection. Um, yeah, and I have all this stuff on auto because I don't want to mess with any of that stuff. Picture effect, cinema tone, uh, fader. And some of these things I haven't even messed with yet. Self timer, you can see some of these things are grayed out. They're grayed out because they're only available when you're in picture mode. So being in picture mode, video mode, and whatever file format will uh, affect what is um, what you can change in the menu. Now I have the digital zoom off. I'm not a fan of digital zoom at all. Um, this camera does 20 times optical zoom. I believe it'll do 30, that extra bit you know that extra ten is is digital. Um, I don't I don't really I don't really suggest going digital route unless you really have to. Steady shot is cool. So steady shot is in relation to the balanced optical steady shot, the boss system that's in the camera. And when you're in 4K mode, you only have the option for off, active, or standard. When you're in the different 1080p modes, you can go in intelligent active. Intelligent active works with the balanced optical steady shot system and it uses part of your CMOS sensor to balance everything out when you're shooting. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit further. Uh, filter protect, auto backlight, manual ring select, which I showed you uh, the other way, but here you can go through there and you can change you know, what's actually being controlled by that, by that ring on the front. So that's really handy. Night shot, you can turn that on and off. You don't disable it. But face detection, uh, which I use because of, you know, doing the video blog and the YouTube. Uh, smile sensitivity, so it'll pick up, you know, a smile. You can have it set to a lower smile, like a slight smile, or even a big smile. So if you're a really happy person, set it to big smile. that will be cool. All right, we keep going down. Now, this is where we have those, those flash, functionality, uh, flash functionality, but you can see it's kind of grayed out. And it's grayed out because there's no flash on this camera. 
Now, if we connect the uh, Sony proprietary flash that will hook them into that cold shoe slash hot shoe, I believe that these would be unlocked so that you could you could utilize that. All right, moving right along, we have my voice cancel, uh, built-in zoom microphone, um, auto wind noise reduction is set to on right now. Uh, audio mode. Now, audio mode is where you would select uh, whether you're in two channel or in 5.1 surround. Um, audio record level. Now, I'm going to tap on this. This is this is important, especially if you want to have good audio. If you connect, whether you're using the built-in camera or you're using a um, uh, a microphone that's connected to this unit, you're going to want to adjust these levels. And you can kind of see the levels here uh, as I'm talking. They're a little bit low. I prefer them low because it's a lot easier to take a lower bit of audio and increase it and still have it sound good. If the audio is too loud, it will clip and it's gonna sound like crap. So you can change it by tapping on this meter here or by pressing the plus and minus. Um, auto mode is exactly what it does. It turns it on auto. But I don't like auto, I like to do it manually. And I like to keep it right around the middle so I can adjust the audio in post-production when I'm editing. Uh, it's always easier to increase the volume than it is to try to lower it after it already sounds like crap. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna go back to menu here, back to camera and mic. Uh, I'm gonna scroll down. Now this is cool. This is your shooting assist part of the menu. You have grid line, focus magnifier, which is cool. Display settings, I have it set to auto. That's all the stuff that was displayed when you're in your shooting mode here. Uh, zebra, that's a really cool feature to help you get really good exposure. You got peaking and auto level display. Um, these are things that you'll I'll have to show later on in another video. All right, so I'm gonna go back out of the menu here and just show you some of the stuff here. Uh, on the main screen, you can see there's a battery level right there, letting me know how much juice we have. Of course, you have the the audio meter right there. That zoom right there is telling me that manual uh, control on the front of the on the front by the lens is set for zoom, so we can zoom in and whatnot. You can also zoom in using the uh, the touch screen here. You got wide and you got telephoto. You have the record button, and uh, of course you have menu now. See how there's a picture of a camera with a circle line through it? That means you cannot take a picture while recording in 4K. Now, if I touch the screen, all this other stuff shows up. It's telling me it's in 4K. I have the active uh, stabilization, you know, that uh, that balanced optical steady shot turned on. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what that means, but we're in camera mode. Whoops, we're in camera mode. Um, I also have right now the auto scene turned off, which you can turn it on just by tapping and we can turn uh, turn it on. And it's supposed to make the shots better um, automatically. Uh, right now it's set to macro. And I would suggest experimenting with this, um, experimenting with everything on the camera. This camera is, is just absolutely phenomenal uh, considering what you're getting here uh, for the money. Now, if I tap on the screen, I can start a, um, I can start a focus lock, an autofocus lock. So what happens is wherever that box is, that's what's going to autofocus on. Uh, this is really cool if you're doing like a bokeh or video bokeh shots. Uh, and you can even do this while you're in the photo mode. Now, as you can see, there are so many different things you can do with this camera. So many different uh, options in your menu and your settings. Um, more than I have time to go over here in this video, which is already really long. And I really appreciate you sticking it out and checking this video out. Welcome back to Great 4K Video. We are back on the Sony FDR AX53 camera using stereo audio. I cannot recommend this camera enough if you're going to be doing any vlogging or any type of YouTube work or if you're just going to run around with your family and videotape. It's a sub thousand dollar camera loaded with features and some of the best features are the the Boss Balanced Optical Stabilization. That's one of the big reasons to get this camera. Also, the sensor does a really nice job and uh, in medium to low level, not too, too low, but it does a pretty good job. And like in the studio, it does a fantastic job. Having that night shot functionality is really cool. And, and even if you didn't have it in your budget right now to get a microphone, this microphone isn't terrible out of the box. So straight out of the box, you could start recording YouTube videos or any kind of videos you wanted and be happy with your results. 
Now with so many pros of this camera, there are a few cons. I don't like the fact that when you open the LCD screen, the camera turns on. I wish that there was a way to open the screen and um, not have the, the shutter open and close every single time. I'm just worried that that shutter is either going to get jammed or it's going to get stuck shut. And while having that manual ring is really handy uh, for zooming and for different settings, the fact that the other settings will be set to auto kind of sucks. But considering the camera was designed as a handy cam to pick up, hit record, and shoot as quickly as possible, it's not really that much of a con considering what this camera was made for. All in all, I definitely recommend this camera and I want to thank you so much for watching all the way through to the end of this video. If you like this camera as much as I do, I'll have an affiliate link for this camera and different accessories for it in the description of this video. And of course, when you purchase from my affiliate links, you're supporting Total Nerd Takeover Studios so I can continue to make awesome videos. Please hit that like button and subscribe to this YouTube channel so you're always up to date on the latest video reviews that we do here. And remember, we are taking over the world one nerd at a time. The nerds are out, baby. Woo! And I'll see you next time for another great video review.